currently is an era of acceleration to create big changes in a short period. This is a strategic anticipation of technology that will continue to develop rapidly in the future. Therefore, the U.S. Navy is trying to develop important programs to make advanced combat equipment, especially personnel and program cycles, and equipment lifespans that have lasted for decades. The United States still has plans and programs to maintain a nuclear deterrent on its fleet of nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines SSBN until the end of the 21st century. However, this could change if competition for submarine technology from other countries becomes more intense and changes the direction of the game. Until now, the U.S. Navy is still working to have 12 nuclear-capable Columbia-class submarines by the early 2040s. SSBNs have very complex and expensive machines so they require highly trained and tough crews to operate these submarines in the face of various possible threats. Based on cost per warhead, this may be the most expensive nuclear weapons basing scheme ever. The U.S. Navy has made major efforts to defend targets at risk after nuclear or other destructive attacks as an important part of nuclear deterrence. The U.S. national security establishment has reached a complete and lasting agreement on the importance of maintaining SSBN or SLBM submarine-launched ballistic missile systems. The budget posture provided by the United States has envisaged allocating funds for the SSBN program as part of the nuclear deterrent. Survivability, the absence of short or medium-term threats and the ability to upload warheads as a safeguard against potential threats or failures affecting the other two parts of the U.S. nuclear triad. The most recent Congressional Research Service report on October 2019 on the Columbia-class SSBNs facing various obstacles such as cost uncertainty, cost growth, scheduling, and technical risks as well as the fact that the Columbia-class program is tied to the UK program to build Dreadnought-class SSBNs is described as an issue that could cause delays in achieving scheduled initial operational capability. The issues like these often complicate large-scale weapons programs, but the Columbia-class is also part of an ongoing trend, specifically the decline in the size of the US SSBN fleet. The U.S. already has various classes of submarines, and now, the United States plans to build 12 Columbia-class ships. Even though the U.S. Navy already has Ohio-class submarines that carry 24 missiles compared to other submarine classes, this is still deemed insufficient so the U.S. Navy needs to build the Columbia-class which is designed to carry only 16 SLBMs. This reduction in the size of the SSBN force reflects an overall reduction in the size of the U.S. strategic deterrent, which has fallen from around 10,000 warheads since the beginning of the end of the Cold War to 1550 warheads. This shows that the U.S. SSBN program contains about 40% fewer ships than its predecessor. If this is true, the next class of SSBNs, in 2060, will carry only seven ships, resulting in very high costs per deployed warhead. Given the decades-long nature of Columbia-class programs, the trend toward disarmament may have weakened support for SSBNs in the years since. The combination of the high cost of placing very few warheads on an expensive system likely lead to the Columbia-class submarines being the last U.S. SSBNs. The length of the Columbia-class program can also give rise to a black swan threat to the program. More deliberate black swan technological innovations, such as artificial intelligence, could be one way to identify still unknown operational traits of SSBNs. Submarine surveillance with sufficient computing power, the oceans may become increasingly transparent. 
Intentional cyber attacks, cyber context, autonomous robotic anti-submarine weapons, nanotechnology, nano-energy, and various forms of threats to SSBNs. Survivability is both a strength and a weakness of SSBNs. Because it would require the enormous costs of this nuclear weapons deployment scheme can only be justified based on survivability. And anything that calls that survivability into question will undermine support for SSBNs. Such a development would have far-reaching consequences as the U.S. would be forced to undertake a deep operational and material response through its deterrence forces to offset emerging threats to its primary nuclear second strike capability. U.S. political and strategic commitment to SSBN is the main capital in this program. But on the other hand, acceleration produces major technological, social, and political changes in ever-decreasing timescales, requiring rapid innovation. With sophisticated systems to respond to an increasingly chaotic environment, Now, the U.S. Navy plans to start purchasing this new class of submarines in 2034. After drawing up the SSNX program, it is assumed that it will be the successor to the current Virginia-class submarines, complete with the Virginia payload module, a vertical launch system that increases the number of tomahawk-sized weapons from 12 to 40 with improved acoustic design and other technologies. The U.S. Navy wants its next-generation attack submarines to be faster, stealthier, and capable of carrying more torpedoes than the Virginia-class submarines. The SSN is still expected to hunt enemy submarines by conducting covert intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance ISR missions, as well as covertly inserting or recovering special operations forces. Given the recent change in the strategic environment from the post-Cold War era to a new situation featuring new great power competition, which some observers believe has occurred, anti-submarine warfare ASW against Russian and Chinese submarines may once again become an effort to counter U.S. Navy submarines. With this new mission, which focuses less on the ability to launch weapons against round targets, we think that the SSNX will be the same size as the Seawolf class, which displaces about 9,100 tons. Using this measure, we estimate building new Seawolf-type submarines would cost about $5.5 billion per submarine. In contrast, the Navy's shipbuilding plans estimate SSNX production will reach about $3.1 billion per submarine. 